Good evening and welcome to Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Gra. Today is a continuation of our topic, Elections 2017, that is your choice in Elections 2017. With me to discuss your choice, Elections 2017, I have a representative from the ANC, that is the Alternative National Congress, Mr. Mohammed El Kamara, a.k.a. Kamara Lero. Mr. Kamara, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you for having me. I also have Mr. Randolph Glee, who is an independent analyst on the show tonight. Mr. Glee, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you so much. Coming in later, we're going to be having on the phone Mr. Randa Dubayu. He's the current Secretary General of CDC USA. Mr. Dubayu will be connecting with us via phone. We also have Mr. Gakon Mowe, who is from the Movement for Economic Empowerment, MOVE. He's also going to be joining us live on the phone. Gentlemen, welcome to a live discussion. Thank you so much. I want us to begin quickly by just uh, a brief introduction of yourself. I have here Mr. Kamara Leto, who's representing the ANC, or who is a member of the ANC and coming uh, for Liberia. Mr. Kamara, just say a little brief thing about yourself. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Mohammed Kamara. I go by the name of Little Kamara. And, uh, well, I joined ANC as a member uh, in 2015, and uh, when I heard about Mr. Cummings in Atlanta, Georgia, I went to one of his uh, hall meetings, and uh, he was well, you know, spoken, and I, I thought that maybe this is the right guy for the job, and after listening to him and going after doing my own research online and following him up with him, then I began to decide that this is the right man for the job. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Mr. Glee, you are an independent, you are not committed to any political party. Yeah. Just say a little thing brief about yourself. I am G. Randolph Glee and I hail from Liberia and former student leader from the University of Liberia, the current PhD student at Clark Atlanta University, and it's a pleasure being on your show. Thank you. Here on Focus on Liberia, we discuss everything about Liberia tonight. Our topic is your choice in elections 2017. Uh, October 10 will be elections in Liberia and it's so crucial that uh, we discuss this so that we can have free, fair and democratic elections. Uh, I want to start with you, Mr. Kamara. Uh, you are supporting Mr. Cummings. I want you to tell us why you think Mr. Cummings is the best person for the job. Who can win these elections in October 10? Well, I tell you why Mr. Cummings is the best person for the job as far as we are concerned looking at his record and uh, looking at Mr. Cummings from the outside perspective you know with all what he has gone to to work your way all the way from the corporate ladder in America with all these uh, things racism and all the stuff we go through as a black man and also as an African especially for him to go up and be executive I think that Liberian will be well deserted if they decide to make him the president of Liberia because he is well qualified and he has what it takes to lead Liberia forward. One of the criticisms I get about Mr. Cummings is that he's new. Okay, so the question is, uh, where, where have you been, Mr. Cummings? How, how, how do you answer that? Well, that's simple. You cannot tell, a doctor can never be new. Doctors can come to a hospital no matter what time, whatever, and still be old doctors. You cannot tell somebody who knows their job, their name. Mr. Comey is qualified, and I'm telling every yeah. one of you who are listening hey, today, you whatever you are in Liberia or outside of Liberia, I'm telling you that this man well, is quali no, he's not new. A new person is somebody who does not know what they're doing. But somebody who knows what they're doing, they're not new. Mr. Comey is, he knows the job, and he's qualified for the job. Thank, thank you. Right now, we have uh, our another guest who's on the phone. That's uh, Mr. Randa W. Randa W is representing the Coalition for Democratic Change. Mr. W, if you're there, we want you to please first introduce yourself and tell us briefly why you think your candidate is the best person for the job. Thank you very much. I'm glad you guys are online. I was prepared for this 
p.m. Central Time, but can you, the can last. You, can you lower your radio? I mean, your phone in the background for feedback, please. We're giving feedback. Yeah, there's nothing in the background. I just talking on the phone. Go ahead. Yes, I'm Randall Massacre Dubai II. I'm the Secretary General of CDC USA and also a communication specialist on the national campaign team CDC. They have come to discuss with Liberians in America, Liberia, and everywhere in the world our agenda, the agenda for the transformation of Liberia. So, in today's presentation, I will be statistically empirical. I will be, I will be tangible in my presentation. I'll be reasonable in, in terms of what we can achieve as a government and why the people of Liberia should elect us. So basically, I will discuss our platform, which has four pillows. And if the time is available, we go in depth in those pillows, why those pillows were selected, and how are these pillows are rich enough to provide the necessary social, economic, and political revolution and labor needs. Our country, Liberia, since its foundation, I mean, 1847, has gone through several republics, it has gone through several era, eras that are shielded with untold Soviet and Agile property. We have had government come and go. We have had the oligarchy, the iron law oligarchy, where a manipulation of our population have always been at the edge alone of greater power, where the vast majority of Roman Agile property. Okay. Our Mr. party, CDC. Mr. Mr. Dubayo. Mr. Devayu, thank you very much. I, uh, just briefly, why you think uh, your candidate is best suited for the job? If we can start from there. My candidate is best suited for this job because of the institution that he represents and because of the character that he is. Of course, our political institution was founded on a resolute conviction for change. A change he was shielded with the vision of concrete transformation. Our party, which Joshua represents, is a collective effort from the chromosome of the masses. So because George Weah is a complete representation of the majority of Liberian people, because George Weah went through vertical social mobility because of his first-hand understanding as to what the ordinary man in Gibraltar means, because of his first-hand empirical knowledge as to what it means to be ostracized as a young man in society, because of his First thing, understanding, knowing what the man in Nikutan, the man in Bokonjida, the man in Tobaitan, the man in Kampli, all the way in play, because he understands what those people need. It makes him a man best suited to lead Labro in this critical period of our most important name. Right now, George Weah is the most experienced politician in the race in terms of consistency as an opposition since the last war ended in 2003. George has been in opposition for the past 12 years. In the last two elections, he has been the only major opposition putting his government on its feet, ensuring that those nutrients required for the people are provided them. Unfortunately, those nutrients were not provided them. The government has made a lot of promises that are yet to be achieved. The promise to connect all the 15 political capitals at the end of their second term, the Unity Party. Thank, thank you. An effort that is an effort that is yet to be realized. Our government, CDC government, is in at promoting infrastructure development which is captured in Peru 3 of our country, I mean, of our, of our platform. Th thank you, Mr. So, Mr. Mr. yes, he led George Weah because George Weah has the intellect, he has the nationalistic purest, he has the real understanding as to what Labro needs to transform Labro from the dungeons of abject poverty to the OEC of endless prosperity. That, that's, that's great. Mr. Dubai, I want to follow up on that a little bit. Uh, what really people are questioning Judge We Are On is not the love for the country. A lot, many people credit him for loving Liberia. Their issue with him is preparedness for the job, his qualification, and being able to manage or work as president. That's where the issue many people are having with him. His qualification, his communication skill, and how prepared is he to lead Liberia? That's where the question is. How, how do you speak to that, please? Uh, then we should, they, should, they should question their understanding about preparedness. Labro is a country of law. We have a constitution. We spare at the requirements and the criteria a person should meet to become president. So you have less for the whole legal qualification. Anything that is not legal, it, is, it doesn't meet you know, my 
my my my it doesn't mean I you know the the, the, the my conversation since it is a legal issue we say as such we are not I mean at this position that the constitution asking yes the constitution says thirty five years of age and you must have had as well as the property in the country he made all, all of those but beyond that when it comes to other advantages let us say Georgia has been an opposition for twelve years. By serving as opposition, he has made a major effort with this government, serving as his ambassador. Th thank you. He has helped to recon so he has helped to reconcile the country. Th Most of that, George Weir is now a senator. As a senator, there are innumerable contributions he has made to our country in a limited period of two years. Well, okay. other lawmakers. Okay. Thank so I don't know what th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dubai. We'll come so, we'll come back to you. We're going to come back to you. Please hold your thought right there. Uh, Mr. Glee, you've yeah. heard from ANC about Mr. Cummings, and you also heard from uh, Mr. Dubayo. I think he, there's a fair point there when he said Judge Weir had met the qualification to become president, has enshrined in the Constitution. How do you look at both the ANC position and also what Mr. Dubayo has said? I think for the good of the listeners, it will be fair enough to do justice by giving some historicity of our election in Liberia. The first election that was held in Liberia was held October 5th, 1847. And at the time, people said it was one party system, but that is another ball game that others said that is not true because at the time they had a true Liberian party and a true wing party. But that is just it. We have 1847 to 1878 emerging democracy. We have 1878 to 1980 the de facto party, two, uh, two wing party. And now we have a military regime. Why am I giving all of these history city of election? Because the very guys who said two wing party was now taking over the leadership and they were not giving a fair game. The very first opportunity they had, the first election, that we saw that we considered to be multi-party election was the 1985 election. The 1985 election, we had all of the political party. I felt that you guys would work together to produce a candidate for the good of the citizen. But instead, we had nine political parties, two, six were denied, and three participated. The first election in 1985, what are those political parties? NDPL, Liberal Action Party, Liberal Unification Party, Unity Party. They produce four candidates. Do you think they really mean business for us when it comes to political institution? 1997, we went to the election. We had 13 political parties. Do you think politicians mean well for Liberians? These are guys that are jumping from political institution to another political institution for the good of their family and not the good of those that are living in Solimwe and not for the good that, for those that are living in Nikapo, not for the good of those guys that are selling water side that got no means that want to try into business. They got no means of getting money from the bank. They are not there. Look at 2005. We have 22 political parties. If even you try to divide the political parties among the political subdivision, there will still be remainder. Now, for 20... 17. We got seven. I mean, we got 26 registered political party, and those are participating now. Some of the political party registered, but they could not even produce stand up barrel. What's your motive? Now we got 22 with stand up barrel. What, are, what is the purpose? Now you look at political institution. Let's take, for example, what Rana Dubai said. His political institution was founded on what? Transformation. Few months back, you just spoke that Speaker Tara was head of the criminal cartel. But Speaker Tara came to your political institution, you held him with four arms. I don't know where you got the other two from. You embraced him to the highest. Few days ago, this guy from Grand Basel, the former protein, Besson Gaffini, this guy was known to be head of the cartel. You guys criticized him that he was not good. Two o'clock, this guy introduced and uh, 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 how to call it, the vice president in Grand Basel. And because his selfish aim was not achieved, the next day he came, when CDC was launching, he was on top of car. From my perspective, politicians are not doing good for our country. I'm looking for someone with an entrepreneurial mind. America today to be developed, it is not a government. It's the individual, the life of people. 
Can we have, as I look into the platform, I not see anybody who is prepared to really empower the youth. We got one state-run university, the University of Liberia, has a population of over 30,000 students. The government is unprepared to take care of that particular university. But yet and still, we have 22 political parties. So, For so, me, so Mr. Glee, what, what are you saying? Are you saying, uh, of all 22, there's no one ready, or you think can For now, they are not prepared. I'm not seeing a candidate. I'm not seeing their platform that will be able to market it to really meet the goals and objective of current librarian status. Let people talk about, every time people talk about, oh, just came from Civil War. Have you checked Rwanda? Go and check Rwanda. Go and check their history. See where they are today. But we got such a political hustler. Now they have divided themselves into political, all of the 22 political institutions. They spread themselves That's so that at the end of the day, all right. they will succeed. Good. So for me, I'm going to stay on the fence until I see that person that will be able to market, that I can see his view that will represent the Liberian people. Mr. Kamara, yes. uh, up to now, Mr. Glee have said no one of all the 22 political parties and candidates. Yes. And uh, he has put everyone in the same basket that uh, not, not, not all of them. So what? how do you tell Mr. Glee about your candidate? Well, what I'm, what I'm going to tell Mr. Glee is, first of all, with all those with all these things he has mentioned, I understand his point of view. I understand his frustration. We all feel the same pain about Liberia. We are all frustrated. I mean, come on, 170 years is enough. This is time about time we put stop to this frustration. And I'm going to tell him right now, while he's sitting right next to me, that Mr. Cummings, ANC party, we are the change maker. ANC party is here to bring change. And if he agree with me, we can give him our agenda, and our agenda is straightforward. The first thing we're going to start off with is infrastructure. You cannot move around Morovia or Liberia. Morovia is not Liberia. We have to have that clear in mind. Like, there's many parts of Liberia. We all go to Liberia, we stay in Morovia. How are you going to know if other places are developed? How are you going to know? And we have been everywhere. I just left Liberia a few weeks ago. And I'm telling you, I did not just stay in Morovia. I travel everywhere in Liberia. I went to Sano County. I went to Niba County. I went to Lofa. And I saw the frustration in the eyes of the Liberian people. And I understand how, how to feel. That's what I'm telling Mr. Glenn right now. ANC party, we are not just talking. We are doing. And we are not just here to just tell people what have happened for 170 years. We are here to tell you what we're going to do moving forward. That is our goal. It is often said that it is easier said than done. Yes. Okay, we have uh, a country that is, you know, not developed. You know, our economy is very, very poor, and then infrastructure-wise, we are not there yet. Electricity, water, you're talking about corruption, all these things. What is uh, ANC view, or how does ANC plan to be that change? that is going to convince someone like Mr. Glee yeah. that truly ANC is able to deliver? Well, the, the, what I can tell him is like Mr. Comey said in his agenda a couple of weeks ago, he sent out a video of short video. Our third thing on our agenda is uh, 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 water development and electricity, which is part of together. And what I can yeah. tell him is Mr. Comey always emphasized that investment, private entity, yeah. is going to be the key to developing Liberia, private entity. In order for us to move forward, just like Mr. Glenn said, said, he said it earlier, he said Liberia cannot move forward if we not invest into private entity. And we, as we, as ANC, as Mr. Comey's members, we always emphasize the importance of investment and importance of business. So our goal is to, for, to him to understand that we are not just going to rely heavily on the government, we're going to also rely on private institutions to help in developing the water facility. Th thank you. And in a in the short while, we'll be going to uh, uh, our representative from the Movement for Economic Empowerment. But before that, Mr. Glee, we have October 10th for elections. Yeah. Liberia cannot wait any longer to find that Mr. Right. Mm -hmm. So right now, if elections were held tomorrow, mm -hmm. well, you're not going to vote for anyone? I'm not going to vote. I and think it's my right. And still, not to vote. And, and still, so with that, 
what are you looking for specifically? It's just very simple. It's like a child who saw this person and said, look, this is what I believe, and I believe my dream is about to be realized. Now, only for the child vision, dream to be caught up, is where the young breed without greed that are trying to make history in Liberia. This is where we find ourselves. The reason why I'm speaking, we saw Madam President, Ellen Johnson Sally. We saw as we saw her as answer to problem. But now, after 12 years, just little that you can see compared to what was invested, then the contradicting part of it, the vice president now who is willing to take over, he said that they had a lot of opportunity that was squandered. That's what the vice president said. But he will be the change maker. But he said, I've been parked for 12 years. He I said, he more been said, I've been parked. You're a VP. You've been parked for 12 years. Can I complete? Can I complete, Mr. ANC? Yes, sir. <laughs> when he said that he was not the squander opportunity, after he said the squander opportunity, I, I, I said, okay, let me see what he's going to do. But he was able to bring the 10 men, the speaker, to be his vice president, to be his running mate. He was able to bring one time dean of the cabinet and former finance minister to be the head of his campaign and he was also endorsed by almost all, all of the members of the first branch of government there's a sharp contradiction it almost like you say look i like your hand but let me use your elbow to walk what's that all right that's why we are asking you that we need a new regime we need everything can to can someone in yahoo must not know about anc agenda Yes. Can someone in uh, Halakal Ezekiel know what AMC is? Yes. We're not just as talking I'm about here, Monrovia I know where Bay. AMC VP is as we now, know huh? I am talking about political institutions that will be willing to market their ideas to ordinary people We're gonna keep and not simple. just move yes. as a political to move. You try to make yourself like a political wing. You just blow and later on you calm down. No. Some of us, we are rooted and granted in politics. We are prepared to work with team that is prepared because political party is government in waiting all right hold that just build around individual Th thank you we want to at this time or uh, is uh mr gago moeb from move on the line mr gago moeb you are representing the movement for economic empowerment in liberia please tell us briefly uh what your party or your candidate can do differently or why you think he's best suited to be the one to deliver our country. All right, we will be going back to Mr. Mr. Gakon Moe, please go ahead and call the studio. At this time, we will go back to uh, uh, to Mr. We will go back to to Mr. Glee. So, Mr. Glee. Mr. Glee, what's your problem with the ANC? The ANC, I can say this for free, and you like to take it. There are three political institutions in Liberia, and those three political institutions will live forever. Student Democratic Alliance Political Party on the campuses of the University of Liberia, Student Integration Movement, same, Student Unification Party, suit. These are institutions. Whether rain or shine will stand forever. Yeah, those mm -hmm. are student organizations. And they are you there. They you are built. They are built and they support each other. But now, now you say, what problem do I have with ANC? If you look at the lifestyle, and everything of Mr. Cummings. He climbed the corporate ladder very well from nowhere to somebody. He's somebody that you can mentor to say, oh yes, he's a very good guy. He can make it. But look at some of the people that he wants to produce as his representative in the house, Takun J. Takun J. Mr. Cummings, man, you grew up in the United States of America. You know a parliament who should be. Now, you ta you're marketing Takun J to go represent a district I ran up from in Liberia. 
I know you don't have the power, but you as head of this particular institution, you should be able to market your vision that those that will come around you will trust you. If that's the case, then we should then, also complain about we are because we have got some people in his institutions that they, they have no ideas what leadership means. But they are still running. That's the reason why Ryan me is telling you he's independent. I'm not uh, policing any political institution. But what I'm seeing, one, Mr. Comis could have ideas and everything. But as I was saying with Madam President, she told us all of the good ideas. When she got there, nothing. She said in six months time, she will electrify Monrovia. So, so 12 years now. So your problem with the ANC or Mr. So Ellis Cummings is, is about yeah. those that are running for the house on the ANC ticket. Those are running for the house. How well and prepared when it comes to him mar marketing the organization to various people. And no, this, this got nothing to do with what he represents and what his platform is and what he hopes to do for Liberia. Has, an, has a political candidate. All right. All right. But hold that thought. Let's go to the movement for economic empowerment. That's Gagon Moa calling from Chicago. Gagon, welcome. What is, I think you got the question. If you didn't, uh, just briefly introduce yourself and why you think the, the, uh, the movement for economic empowerment being led by Mr. Mr. Led by your candidate is the one suited best to lead Liberia. That's Mills Jones. Please go ahead, Mr. Moore. Currently going on, but uh, to be quite frank, to tell you why I think Dr. Jones is the one, is the one that is capable to transform Liberia from uh, 170 years of living in total abject poverty to take Liberia uh, forward. I think uh, he is the one that has the vision, that is capable to have the strength and knowledge. He has the technical know-how. He understands where Liberia is, and he understands the needs of our people. Mm -hmm. uh, me saying that, you know, uh, the slogan of our party is poverty is now death. For the past 30 years, since I have been living, since I have been knowing Liberia, over 85% of our population has always been in poverty. When Dr. Jones was tested uh, in 2006, he showed Liberians that, yes, there is a way. There is a way that we can empower Liberians, that we can put money in the pockets of our own Liberians. Not only that, Dr. Jones took our not knowing financial institution, the Central Bank of Liberia, from having $5 billion in its reserve. So growing it to where now today we have a modern structure, a strong financial system in our in, in, in Liberia. Not only that, our villagers have to come all the way to Morovia to uh, put money in banks. They can stay in the various counties today. They can be able to go to a banking centers within their counties. Not only that, Dr. Jones opens a way for you know loaning financially to. You know, uh, uh, people that were frowned upon, you know, if you didn't have a Johnson, if you didn't have an English last name, you know, those people were not given a chance to have to borrow from banks. Dr. Jones, through his financial inclusion policy, a lot of Liberians, the, uh, the market women, the, 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 uh, the village, uh, the people that, that, you know, that were not qualified to open banks account had an opportunity to borrow money, and those people pay the money back. But, uh, you know, the issue of mobile money, uh, making sure that banks have a, a, a security before they can come, you know, in the country and open a bank. You know, because back in early 2090, people, banks were closing, people were going without money, they were standing in long lines. So Dr. Jones make, make it possible for, you know, the country to have a strong financial uh, institution in, in, in Liberia today. Thank, thank but, you. I don't know whether, whether 
Somebody you want me to start with who Dr. Jun is, but this is someone who, upon graduation from the American University on... Mr. Moore. Filipino, you're taking a break and we'll be back and continue with you, okay? Thank you, Gakan. We, we, okay. we, we'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. Again, you are watching Focus on Liberia and we are discussing your choice in elections 2017. We'll be right back after a short commercial break. Iberia is home. Iberia is home. Why up on 
Welcome back to Focus on Liberia. We are discussing for tonight, Elections 2017 and your choice. With me, I have a representative from the Alternative National Congress, Mr. Mohammed El Kamara. On the lines, I have Mr. Gakon Moe from the Movement for Economic Empowerment, that's MOVE. And also on the line, I have Mr. Randa Dubayu from the Coalition for Democratic Change. Also, I have an independent-minded person who is not committed to any political party. In fact, he does not support any of the 22 political parties in like, or candidates, and he's not going to be voting for them if, vote, if elections were held today. Mr. Randall Glee. <coughs> Gentlemen, welcome back to Focus on Liberia. Thank we you. are broadcast live from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, Right now, I want us to uh, go briefly and see, you know, Liberia has everyone who's coming, a presidential candidate want to solve a problem. There's an issues that you want to address. Mr. Glee, I know you are not committed to any political party. What do you think the issue is in Liberia? I know we may have many issues. What are our key issues and what kind of person you're looking for to solve those issues? One of the issues the, uh, the key issue that I believe that we should be looking at here is education. If you transform the mind of the person, you transform their thinking and their behavior and their attitude. So, manners education, nothing will happen. It's almost like taking someone from Yahweh Mesno and bringing them to live in Twins Tower, maybe where. Sooner or later, they're going to turn that particular place to Nima County. And beat GB in a certain place. I, why? I, I it has to, to do with why. I'm from Nima. I'm just very clear. I don't think I have to be yeah. to apologize for that. I'm from Nima. So if any other person will say, those who know me, they know very well that I police that. I police that particular county very well in everything that I do. But I'm just giving a literal example. I don't want to say this trap, but I'm talking about where I'm from. So what am I saying? Education should be the priority. All right. And when you do education, you also have to empower the people. Let's take for example, if you're telling me that I'm working and I leave on job with $100, but you got a representative that take away $15,000, what are you telling me? Where is the policy? 
what's the reason of having policy in a country? Where are the laws? But we're not seeing that. Education, like, it's a sad thing that we'll have somebody called education minister and he makes more great other education and you stay keeping in the ministry. All right, so your issue is education. Yeah. As long as the, the education part is correct, everything is good. So if it's you look all connected. It's okay. not just education alone. There are other things that are connected to education, education. Because when you're talking about education, you should have someone who is schooled to understand the criminal justice system that will be able to uh, reform the criminal justice system. It all for honor education. So you're not just going to collect somebody and give them position because they are they're related to you. So that's why when you talk about education, education is holistic in answering questions right. to Thank you. a nation. I, I'll go to you, Mr. Kamara. Uh, Liberia may have many issues. Which of those issues you consider key and what is your party or your candidate doing to solve those issues? Well, the more I just left Liberia in two weeks, so I can't. This is, even to me personally, to me, the key issue right now in Liberia is two things, but I'm going to tell you the first one we need right now. We need security. Liberians need to have to feel secure. You cannot, you can have whatever you want. Education comes with security, all the things we're talking about. We need people to feel secure. We need, we need people to feel secure around, and uh, if, you, if you travel around Nimba County, you travel everywhere, you need people to feel like, okay, you know what, I feel security. Even, you see why people in America, a lot of them don't go back to Africa, Africa, now in Liberia, because they feel that it's less secure. But if we can have, if ANC is focused, our main goal is first thing is to focus on security, and the second thing is citizen, or uh, 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 economic citizenship and economic citizenship is a is a word that we use in our in our ANC camp, which we we're gonna in terms of investment, in terms of for citizens to have job, and so if we can have security, then we can have provide job for people. That's our main focus. How do so, we so, get this job? So, so How the job is gonna be provided? In, invest or uh, uh, in, in in terms of bringing investors. How do you bring the investor when if you're not you having when the when the mines are not prepared because it's almost like what happened during the time you had Lanco? Mm -hmm. You opened Lanco without schooling citizens of that particular region mm -hmm. how to operate the mountain. So we brought people from Brazil, we brought people from other areas, and those citizens there, they were only used as what? Drivers. Well, and at the end of now. the day, so if you're telling me yeah. your priority now is to empower, I mean, how to call it, is to be able to bring economic empowerment when the mines are not prepared, how do you do that? If I take now a construction company, how many engineers? Yeah. How many engineers will be able to work with that particular well, company? Well, we're not just looking at... See, that's the thing about Liberia. I'm just giving one you example. Know, yeah, you look at Liberia, and that's the most common problem we have. We're not using sometimes common judgments. And that's a big vocabulary that we need to understand. Common judgment is very simple. In Liberia, people look at, oh, we need big company. We need... This. No. When we're talking about investments, we're talking about small company, even rubber company, to make plastic, to make shoes. Liberia can't even make shoes. Liberia can't even make plastic. Go to Guinea. I traveled to Guinea when I was on my way back to America. I stopped. I stopped in Guinea. I stopped in Africa. I was How many industry there All right. that can school people to do that? They, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Just talking company, about education. You're talking about looking at even here. You're talking about big things like go to school for four years, five years no. before you do it. No, I'm, uh, I'm talking about economic citizenship investment. Bring when we bring uh, small company that will be able to. You can work even if you don't have education. When you have high school degree, you can read and write. You can able to work for a simple company. Right. Just the same way in America, there are people who work. In a company, simple company here, they have only high school diploma. So if you gonna tell me that we're gonna sit down and wait for another four or five years before we school people, before we bring economic empowerment, that means you are wasting our time. Right, no, and, and that's uh, not what I'm saying, Mr. Glee. I think yeah. economic empowerment is all connected to education. So exactly. if, if people are empowered economically, it, it still means that they're educated. But uh, it's we want to we want to we want to go back on the uh, on the on the line to uh, Mr. Gagon Moy. Are you still on the line? Oh, Dubai. And Dubai. then, Mr. Randall, Dubai, are you still on the line? Okay. We want to go back to uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Randall, Dubai. Mr. Randall, Dubai, if you are on the line. All right. We'll, we'll please call the studio. The number is 404-300-3925. Please call the studio and be part of the conversation. The number to call is 404 Three zero zero three nine two five. 
Again, we are talking about the issues that are confronting the country. I have heard uh, when uh, Mr. Cummings spoke during the debate, everything was about the economy. I heard from uh, Mr. Dr. Jones, he said okay. leadership. For the certain VP, he said everything is road, road, road. The CDC, most of the time, we, when we talk about op Josh Weir, we talk about the love for the country. So, but before that, we want to go to Mr. Randall Dubois. Uh, Mr. Dubois, you tell us from the CDC perspective, what are the key issues confronting Liberia and how is the CDC-led government is going to tackle those issues? On our agenda for the transformation of Liberia on Ontario 1. But before going to that, let me say that I don't feel treated unfairly on this program. I'm not a spectator. I am, I am one of your guests. A participant was made for more than a week. And the guys in the studio have more leverage than me. My institution name is on the line here. And I must have some to adequately disseminate to the listening audience on what I can do. So the audience can judge me right. I have not been treated fairly. The studio guests have been given more leverage. Then other panelists, uh, in my fair judgment, is not wrong. Now, Somebody to your question, to your question, uh, what are the key issues? Our platform, Pedro One, uh, is a power to the people. Pedro One Cultural Education. Why did we take education? Agree with Brother Glee. Education, strengthening, enlightening, or widening the whole school. We, we are having some technical difficulty with uh, with that line, and uh, so we'll be moving forward if uh, Mr. Gako more because our goal here is to treat everyone equally. We are just having some technical difficulty in studio. So if you are there, please call us. The number to call is 404-300-3925. We want to apologize to Mr. Dubayu and also Mr. Moe on the line. We're having some technical difficulties. But please call us anytime at any point. So as I was saying, uh, I, I listened to Mr. Cummings who saw everything within the economic lens. So even up to, up to reconciliation, he said it has to do with the economics. Okay. Right. When I listen to oh. Dr. Jones, it's all about leadership. He says it's because of leadership. When I listen to Judge Weir, I hear the law for the country. Hello? The law and what can I do for the country. I, I, Mr. Glee, let me start with you. Looking at Liberia's issue, is it about rules? Is it about leadership? Is it about the economy? Or is it what, from an independent perspective? All is very important when it comes to the Liberian issue. The road is very important. Once upon a time, Lofa and Nima were the bread basket Hello? for Liberia when it comes to our food supply. If you have bad rule, there is no way that they can bring their produce to town. Hello? And when you're talking about leadership, if you have a group of guys, if you have people in leadership that lacks the capacity, the, the, the capacity to really provide leadership by directing and being earnest to what they're doing, and you have a leader that is also there, that is not setting deterrent, Many people go about eating money and not doing those things. So our issue is holistic when you talk about road construction, when you talk about education, when you're talking about the criminal justice system. So all is very important. Great. Please hold that thought and we have a caller on the line. Call out your name and where you're calling from, please. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. U.S. Go ahead, please. Call out your name and where you're calling from. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. I said my name is John Sunday. I'm calling from Maryland. Okay, go ahead. We have, we have Welcome, ahead. John. Your question or go comment, Go ahead with my please. comment. Yes. I was calling to address the issue regarding leadership in the country and what we did. That was one of the questions that was raised by, uh, by your host. I think the Congress for Democratic Change addresses the most important issue that is faced by the country, and that issue is education. Unfortunately, uh, 
Mr. Glee on the show um, is, is, you know, undecided. Um, you know, it's one thing to hope, you know, for a particular candidate. It's another thing to make a, a decision based on a choice architecture that is available. And if his concern is education, I think the Congress for Democratic Change addresses that appropriately posted front and center mm-hmm. uh, in, his, in his platform. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on um, is the importance of patriotism in this entire mix. I think is that if our leaders were patriotic, most of the issues we face or we've been facing would have been resolved. The reason why we have a lot of corruption is because we have prevalence of people who pretend to be very educated and yet are unpatriotic. Because if you love your country, you will not deny the common people your chance of having better education by draining the resources that are needed for them to go to school through corruption. And so it all comes back to patriotism. Of course, competence is important, but patriotism has to be put front and center, and that issue is extremely important. I think George Weah has exhibited that time again, and so I think he's the most qualified person. Okay, John. That, that that's what I yeah, John, thank you very much. John, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. All right. John, the, the issue that people have, uh, people have, and I asked about uh, Mr. Duboyu before about George Weah, it's not patriotism, but you say it's the key one. Most people are questioning his preparedness for the office, his uh, communication skill, and sometimes they think that uh, even with a, uh, with a master's degree, his uh, presentation when he's making a speech does not represent that. And that's why they have, that's their fear of having uh, Josh Weah being the official spokesperson or the head of the country. Managing. I, I think I think that's 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 a misconception. Okay. Mr. We are is, is very well qualified. You know, there there are people who want to box Mr. Weir, who want to put Mr. We are in a particular box, who believe that the same candidate in two thousand and five is the same candidate today. And I think that's a very big mistake. Mr. We has exhibited a depth of knowledge on the campaign trail, we've all seen him. You know, he's exhibited, you know, a lot of compassion. He's challenged his opponents as he as he as he campaigned. He, you know, I, I think he has he has the ability to lead. Thank you. So the issue of depth, the issue about knowledge, I think is a is, 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 is a straw man. This is an attempt by people who want to use the issue of Mr. Weir's education as a proxy for something else. Now they'll have to tell us what it is. But certainly, I think Mr. Weir is very qualified, and he has exhibited it on the campaign trail. We've seen it. Those who know him can testify to that. Th- thank you very much, John, and thank you so much for calling in. A- at this time, we're thank going to go back to Mr. Randall Dubayu, who's uh, representing the Congress for Democratic, or the Coalition for Democratic Change. Mr. Dubayu, if you're on the line. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Hello. The question on the floor, Mr. Dubayu, is uh, what are the key issues facing Liberia and what can a CDC-led government do to address those issues? Thank you. Like I said, education is kept on about the people in the one of our platform. And just as education, and just you have said, our party has said, we will make education a priority, free compulsory primary education. Why it will be free? Why? Because they are already striving people of our country calamity, they don't have food on that table. It is extremely unreasonable to have those people that are extremely unclear paying school fees in government school and paying school fees in private school. So we are in the CDC is adequately prepared in order to 
on the side. I can tell you this good news. On the session three. Thank you, Mr. Dubayo. Mr. Dubayo. Yeah, hello. I got good news before concluding. No, I want to. I want to follow up on something. bad news here? I want to follow up on something, Mr. Dubayo. It is often said that uh, show me your friend and I'll see who you are, right? What one of the issues they also have with the uh, CDC is that um, you are now in bed with people that you describe as uh, as the, as the as the bad people, the cartel or the, the corrupt people in government. So these are the people that are now on, that are now supporting you and that are making sure that are working with you. So if these people, if you call, no, yesterday no, let, you call let, them let corrupt, you, I'm not. I, I'm not a I'm not a believer of that whole ache analogy that says, show me your friend or tell you who you are. Mind you, I'm a Christian. When Jesus said came on earth, Jesus said was a divine being, but he was a friend with us. He was a friend with sinners. He met that girl. So are you telling me that Jesus said the criminal because he has that girl as a friend? Right. So, so, so what you are saying basically so, is uh, it's not a bad idea if uh, those that uh, the CDC described as corrupt, the corrupt cartel are all are right now. I don't know what is the empirical proof to illustrate that we are dealing with, with economic cartel. You know, we are in a country of law. There is nobody within the city that has been convicted of economic crime that we shooting. There is nobody you can point to. You are speaking on a basis of rolling sentiment that has no illustrated empirical fact. We are telling you we went into a coalition as a political party with three political parties. We did not go into coalition with individual. So those political parties, they bring their platform, we brought our platform, we saw union, we saw unitarism, we saw a point of criminality. So in our effort, we started to collectively engage in this position, this government, that have made our country economically paralyzed, that have engulfed our country with economic polio. This is our vision to transform labor. It's not about downing and warning with people that have committed economic crime. There is nobody within the CDC that has been convicted by the court, any court in Labor that has committed economic sabotage against our nation. So we are a political party of law. Thank you. We be with the rules of engagement consistent with law. We're talking about a country led by somebody who people say is that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair so, point. So, so I want to emphasize on the issue about people being prepared. What is the definition of preparedness if today your country is Liberia? In 2010, you say right. gave a report. According to you, say Liberia has 6,000 miles of road. Rana Dubai is going to take over the show. He's going to take over the show. And now he thinks he's going to take over the show. Mr. Dubai, that point was made earlier. So that's, that's yes, well understood. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
and he said he will deliver Neymar. Okay. So oh, oh, most of the political oh, institutions, they are meant for business and not the good for the citizen. Right. So some of them you're talking about, if you're telling me that you have a political party that is here, that you have the, the hair office on Elon Street, but no one down 18th Street even know about that political party, are you prepared? Like even the, the pastor you're talking about, Bujumbura, how inform the librarian people when it comes to his minds or what he want to do? Look, politics is not just about deciding to say, wake up in the net and see four kids in your house and your wife looking good, you say, I want to be president. No. It's all about preparation. How prepared is he? Being pastor on Bujubura camp does not prepare you to be leader for Liberia. How many persons know about what you, what you want to do? What's your track record? Like another guy called from Liberia, he telling me that Mill June is about to take out all the poverty. Mill June sat over Central Bank. He starts to run campaign with state money, almost like taking a monkey and using the, the tail to tie the neck. And Liberian people call him Goodman. Since he left Central Bank, how many loans he giving out? <laughs> Since he left Central Bank, how many loans he giving out? Look, let me be very clear. Mel Jones, at the time I was a, uh, at the University of Liberia Student Union as vice president, Mel Jones gave five million, I mean six million, to the students. Oh yes, we celebrated. But I said this particular money that he gave is almost like taking my tail and using it on my neck. It's not good. You give him loan with alcohol collateral. What sense does that make? Who's going to pay such money? Who's going to pay back? So he took the Liberian people money, gave it to prepare as though it's almost like you go into the pool fishing you're not dropping those material there because you love the fish you're not dropping it there because you want to take them out of the water and that's what Mildew is doing so people see him as a political godfather that have come to look he just a prepared cartel giant to take people out of this place and i would never support him thank thank you so much we, we have uh, another <laughs> color on the line <laughs> yeah And uh, hey, yeah, Th thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, all right, let let's go, uh, Mr. Mr. Kamara. Yes. Let's go to the to the ANC, Mr. Mr. Cummings. As uh, I, I, from from what I see, he is 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 been here right here in Atlanta. Yes. He he, he was doing very very good here. Yes. Okay, and now he's come back to. He's gone back to Liberia to run. At one point, he was disqualified based on the 10-year residency clause. The question is, if, uh, and then there was uh, a Supreme Court ruling that qualified him. People are saying, if Mr. Cup, they are saying that he broke the rules. Okay, so if he, some, because we talk of corruption, so it's very possible that the, the, his qualification could be because of something else. Okay, so if he went through some way or through, well, if there was some arm twisting done, I don't know, okay. to qualify him as president, how can we be sure that he's going to be that law and order, stand for justice and stand for all of us? What? Don't you have, don't you have a president in Liberia right now? Yes, we do. Okay, don't you have a constitution? Yeah, there is. Don't a you have a Supreme Court? We have all those. Okay, don't he, didn't he, did he go went through the system? He did. Okay. Then I, the system found him innocent. And and that's an area. No, 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 and, that, yes and, that's no? a, and that's an area that we want. The Supreme Court found him innocent. innocent. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, once he you found free. a man innocent, he's free, right? Yeah. Right. So uh, it doesn't matter what you or I have to say. I got a question for ANC. Right. All right. So we are almost out of time. So so we're going to be uh, just get your final words on focus on Liberia. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Kamara. What's your final word to the Liberian people? Well, ladies and gentlemen, my final word to the Liberian people is vote with your conscience. And uh, you all understand that we are in a critical moment of time. This is a transition period for Liberia and for every one of us. If we all want to have peace and a better Liberia, I think with all my heart that Mr. Kamara is the best candidate for this time and this period of time. Thank you so much. I'll go to Mr. Glee. Your final thoughts. <laughs> all right. I want to take this time to encourage all Liberians come or to attend. Make sure you go to the poll. Vote your conscience. Vote who you believe can make this change. Liberia need a leader. 
that will have a mindset of being an entrepreneur to prepare young minds to take over and develop their nation. I believe we should make sure that we all go to the pool and vote. And it was a pleasure being here to be part of this particular noble discussion. Editor, we go to Mr. Randall W. from CDC for his closing comments. Thank you very much. My closing comment for CDC is for George. We are George. We are understand the economic reality of Liberia. He knows what it means to live in poverty. He knows what it means to live in riches. Don't worry, it's not coming because he's an American boy who is disconnected from the reality of the <laughs> Absolutely disconnected. You understand like Rob theory. He doesn't understand like practical reality. George, we are living in poverty. He grew up in poverty. He understands poverty. He went in riches. So this is a man who knows the difference between riches and poverty. Joshua has that integral reality that can be delivered. And our agenda, is to is the agenda for prosperity. We have four below. Yeah, has everything you need is included. Ronald Clee, good news is, Philo won't talk about you, uh, reintegration and uh, empowerment. Right? We intend to make our MPTC an institution that will be redeemed from antiquity to much. Th thank, we'll thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dubayo. Okay. So, uh, so thank you very much. I hope to come back next time. And, you know, already given that teacher well today, and there is not enough time. But Man. all you want to do is make them happy. Th th thank you. <laughs> do we have uh, Mr. Gakko Moe on the line for his closing remarks? Okay, if Mr. Gagon is not there, I want to thank you gentlemen, both in studio and also on the line. I want to thank our viewers around the world. I want to thank you so much for, for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, again, this is Focus on Liberia. We come to you every week, Sunday at 7 p.m. We broadcast right here in Atlanta. Uh, please follow us on Twitter, on YouTube, and also Facebook. You can also watch this on TV International. Until next time, my name is Dennis Jha. God bless you. Thank you.